What's up guys? Welcome back to Rodan TV. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to like, subscribe, click the notification bell, and of course, share this video to your friends. Before we'll have our last one, shout out first to John Moore Morales, General Gedukos, and to my psychology research class. Well, here is your shout out, guys. When you talk about Z-score, which is our lesson for today, it is used to locate the position of a particular observation relative to others in a given data set. So what are you waiting for? Let's go and let's have an example. Problem. The monthly expenditure of a large group of households are normally distributed with a mean of 48,700 pesos and a standard deviation of 10,400 pesos. What is the z-value of monthly expenditure of 59,100 pesos and 38,300 pesos? In relation to our problem about the monthly expenditure, we are asked to find a par two particular expenditure, whether how far they are away from the mean. So technically, to solve this problem, we're going to use z-score. As I mentioned earlier, and I further explained this time, for example, this is your mean. And then one score there mentioned, which is, uh, what, what's the score? Which is 59,100. If this is the 59,100, 59, we're going to describe now how far this 59,100 expenditure deviates away from the center, the mean. So the distance here, this distance that we're going to do that we're talking about, this is being described in terms of standard deviation. So meaning to say, how far this particular observation or this monthly expenditure away from the mean in terms of standard deviation. Okay? So to solve that, now let me show you our formula. You notice that we're talking about large group of household. So by taking this into consideration, it implies population. Because we're using the term large group. But those were just some signal term which uh, formula we're going to use. Meaning to say, there are actually two formula that I'm going to introduce. The first formula for our z square z equals x minus mu over sigma. And then the other one is z equals x minus x bar divided by sd. Now, you notice these are exactly the same. This is, by the way, for population. And this is for sample. That's why since I mentioned with large group, then we are going to copy or at least apply this particular formula. You notice this is the x here. x uh, refers to the specific or the particular, particular score or observation. Okay, well, mu here, mu is our population uh, mean. And then, this is also the x bar. x bar is our sample mean. And then, of course, our denominator, our sigma, this is uh, population standard deviation and then our SD of course very common it is our sample standard deviation okay so this is our two formula now to solve for our z score value as asked in the problem we are going to use this one like I said we are bound to use this formula because of the large group term used in our problem so first thing is okay we have this one z score now let us identify what is our x what is our mu and what is our sigma okay like i said x refers to a particular observation or score in a data set in this particular data set here we're asked to solve for 59,100. So, 59,100, that is our specific or particular observation that we're asked as to how far it is as it deviates from the center or the mean. So, we have 59,100. 
100. And then of course, our mu, that is the population mean, it's stated in the problem that the, the, uh, the population happens to have a average monthly expenditure of 48,700. Okay, and then our standard deviation also stated in the problem, the standard deviation is 10,400. So, that is 10,400. Now, we will solve this one. You have Z. Our X is 59,100 minus our mu is 48,000. 700 and then divided by 10,400 59,100 minus 48,700 that's 10,000 then divided by of course 10,400 our answer is 1 positive 1 z score equals positive 1 okay that is our answer for the first one so we have computed that the monthly expenditure, the given monthly expenditure of 59,100 happens to be, uh, he, uh, its z-score value is 1, positive 1. Why I emphasize the uh, sign of our result here because it matters when we explain. It refers uh, something in the position, okay? So, you notice that our z-score for the first observation, the first score is positive 1. Now, let us solve the next uh, problem the next month expenditure given also in the problem which is the 38,300 so let's go one now let us solve the z score value of the second monthly expenditure in our given which is 38,300 so let's start our x this time is 38,300 of course we have the same mu and we have the same sigma you have 48,700 and then you have 10,400 okay these are all in pesos because we're talking about pesos and then let's solve now you have x or z equals x minus mu over sigma our x is 38,300 over or rather minus 48,700 over 10,400. Okay, let's use our calculator. That's 38,300 minus 48,700. Okay, divided by 10,400. Our answer is negative. Okay, our answer is negative 1. So, we have solved and found out that the second monthly expenditure in this problem, which is 38,400, uh, happens to be one standard deviation uh, below the mean. Actually, it's negative. That's why it's negative one. Let me just explain to you the implication now. Why? Uh, what's the implication of a z-score that is positive one and a z-score that is negative one? Because you might be wondering, what's the meaning when we have negative uh, z-score and what's the meaning of positive z-score? Come on, let's have and find out what is its implication okay now we have positive one as our first z score which is referring to the score or the monthly expenditure 59,100 and then we have negative uh, one a z score equivalent to 38,300 that's another monthly expenditure also stated in this problem now what is or what do you think is the implication of negative one here and positive one uh, being our z score equivalent to these two monthly expenditure now here is the explanation you notice that our mean here is 48,000 48,700 and our um, standard deviation is 10,400 the meaning now of the positive and the negative one uh, z-score value is that the positive one z-score here referring to 59,100 means that this monthly expenditure is one standard deviation above the mean above meaning to say we're referring to a monthly expenditure that is higher than the average higher than 48,700 while the negative one uh, z-score value implies that 
the monthly expenditure of 38,300 happens to be one, one standard deviation below the mean. When you say below the mean, it means to say that that monthly expenditure of 38,300 is actually one standard deviation below the mean. Now, what is the meaning of one standard deviation here since I'm already me uh, mentioning standard deviation? It means to say that the 59,100 monthly expend expenditure is 10,400 higher than our mean. Meaning to say, once 48,700 added by our standard deviation here, the result is 59,100. One standard deviation refers to 10,400. Okay? That's why when you say 59,100, that is precisely um, 10,400 higher than 48,700. When you say negative 1 standard deviation, it means to say it is 10,400 lower than uh, than the 48,700. No wonder that 48,700 minus 10,400, the result is 38,300. And the mean 48,700 plus 10,400, you will get 59,100. That is the meaning or the implication of the positive one and then the negative one standard deviation. Well, there you go. That's the complete process and how we solve for the Z score of a particular observation. Uh, in a given data set. I'd like to remind you guys that whenever the z-score value is positive, it means to say that the particular observation is, happens to be greater than the mean. When the z-score value is negative, it means to say that that particular observation happens to be less than the average or the mean. That is our lesson for today. If you have some comment, comments, suggestions, Leave it in the comment section and let me know what's your say of this video. With that, thank you so much for watching. Uh, be safe and God bless you.